Langchain is an AI toolkit that lets you build complex applications on top of LLMs like ChatGPT. You can use them to create prompt templates and you can turn them into chains which you can link together in a sequence. You can also use it to create agents with context awareness and reasoning ability. For example, here's an agent that knows how to search Google for the population of two countries and then do some basic math calculation with them. In this video, we're going to look at some basic examples of how to use Langchain. This includes how to structure your output, how to create a sequence of LLM commands, and how to build an LLM agent that can look up information from the internet. We'll be doing this using the Langchain Python library, but Langchain is also available in JavaScript as well if you prefer to use that. Let's get started. First, you'll need to install Langchain into your Python environment. You can do that using this pip command. Once you've installed it, you'll also need OpenAI to follow along with this video. Although Langchain does let you plug in most other LLMs as well. So make sure you install OpenAI if you haven't already, and then go to the website and create an account where you can get your private API key. Set your API key into your environment variable. This will allow Langchain to use OpenAI models like ChatGPT. Once everything's installed, you're ready to start using Langchain. But first, let's take a quick look at how it all works. You can think of Langchain as a sort of wrapper around LLMs. It abstracts away the implementation details and it gives us a more useful way to interact with it. Usually, the first step to interacting with an LLM is the prompt. Langchain gives us a way to format a prompt with variables. Now, this doesn't seem like anything special at first because you can also just do this with a string format, but you'll see why it's useful later. Next, it sends your prompt as an input to the LLM. Uh, and this can be any LLM of your choice. But in this example, we're going to be using OpenAI's ChatGPT. Uh, and once it does that, you'll get a string output. This is called the predict phase. But sometimes the string output isn't always going to be in the right format that you want. So you can also add a parser at the end of the sequence, and it'll figure out how to best reformat this text output so that it complies with your output model. So to summarize, all of this is for the sake of adding superior abstraction and structure to an LLM. This will make it much easier to then leverage that LLM to build business logic with. Now let's take a look at some code. We can start by creating an instance of the LLM we'd like to use. Here, I'll use OpenAI's ChatGPT model. To make a prediction, use the predict method and then pass in the prompt as a string. And here, the response you get is the text output from the LLM itself. Most of the time though, if you're using LLMs for an app, you're going to want a prompt template that you can use to create multiple other prompts just by plugging in some values. Here's an example. In this prompt template, I want it to list n number of meal ideas for a particular type of cuisine. So I make the number of recipes I want and the type of cuisine a pluggable inputs to this template. To then create a prompt from the template, you can use the format method and then provide values for the placeholders. And now then when we run it, you should see results like this. This is incredibly useful if you want to build an app and only expose fields for your end user to fill in. And then you will have your prompt template do all of the heavy lifting. But what if you wanted to have a structured output as well? For example, let's say you're building an AI app for movie recommendations. And your requirement is that all movies have a title, a genre, and a year of release. How do you guarantee that the LLM always gives you information in this structure? To solve this problem, Langchain has something called output parsers. Let me show you how that works. First, you're going to have to install the Pydantic library if you haven't already, because we're going to use this to define the structure of our output model. Once you've installed it, you can create a Pydantic model for your movie object like this. You can specify each field, what data type that field should be, and a description of the field so that the LLM knows what it should put in there. Next, create a parser using the Pydantic output parser class, and then pass in the Pydantic model that you just made. Then, define a prompt template that instructs the LLM on how to format the output. The parser actually has a helper method for this, and the helper method is called getFormatInstructions. Here's some example code of how it all looks. When it's all done, you can run the prompt and you'll get a more structured output. But this is still a JSON string. To turn it into an actual Python object, run the parser over it. 
now you have an actual instance of that pydantic movie object you created earlier. Now, you might be thinking that this code looks a bit clunky because we're just running a bunch of things in sequence where we're passing data from one output to the next. Luckily, Langchain gives us a special syntax we can use to simplify this. It's called Langchain Expression Language, or LCEL, and it looks like this. It makes your code a lot cleaner to look at, and it works quite similar to piping in Bash, if you're familiar with what that is. And once you've put all of that together, you could invoke the whole sequence like this. So it's super clean, it's just one line rather than three function calls in a row. Putting all of that together, this is how our code now looks in our program. So we've got our Pydantic model here, we've created our LLM, our parser, and here's our prompt. And then we put all of that together, and now we can run it. And there you have the result. So remember when I said at the beginning of the video that Langchain's formatting utility would become useful later? Well, here's why. One of Langchain's core features is that it allows you to chain together a sequence of prompts. This is useful if you have prompts where the input depends on the output of another prompt. For example, here I have one prompt to come up with a synopsis for a movie, and then I have a second prompt to come up with the title for that movie based on the synopsis. I want the output of the first prompt to be the input of my second prompt. If you have a situation like this, then you can chain them together using a sequential chain. A sequence can have multiple input keys and output keys, and it'll plug in the appropriate value into each prompt at each step of the chain. And as we run the code, it will go through the chain one step at a time until it gets to the end. And by the end, you get this output object with all of the output keys specified. So here our input was for a comedy movie, and then we get this synopsis here, which is just a couple of lines, and then the synopsis was used to create title suggestions for this movie. Finally, let's talk about LLM agents, which I think is the most interesting concept in the Langchain toolkit. So previously, we saw a chain that can execute a sequence of actions one by one. But what if we had more complex problems that require multiple non-deterministic steps to solve? This is where an agent comes in. Rather than having a static sequence of steps, an agent instead has a set of tools that it can use. And tools are literally anything that you can implement as a function. So it could be a tool to search the internet, or search Wikipedia, or call external APIs. The agent then uses an LLM as a reasoning engine to figure out its next step, such as which tool to use and what information to supply to that tool. It can then use the output of one tool as input to another tool and repeat that process until it solves the initial problem. Let's take a look at some code examples. Here I've created two tools. One is a tool to search Google and another one is a simple calculator. Let's think of a problem where the agent needs to use both of these tools in order to be successful. First, we'll have to create the agent before we can use it. And we can do that by using these tools with a prompt template, a parser, and an agent schema. Now, don't worry if you don't know what some of these things are yet, because I'm deliberately skipping over a few of the details in order to show you the full picture end-to-end -end first. Uh, but you can find the full runnable code for this project in the video description. And once I've put together the agent, I can use this thing called an agent executor, which is sort of like a runtime for an agent, uh, with this agent, with the tools, and I can ask it a question. So in this case, I'm asking it, what is the population difference between the US and the UK. Now let's actually go to the terminal and run this code ourselves to see what the agent would do. Here is the result of running that agent. The agent first realizes that it needs to search for the population of the US. So that is what its first action is. And here is the output from that search. Now, if you ask an LLM what the population of the US is, it might be able to provide you an answer, but there's certain types of data and information that if you want it to be fresh or you want the most recent version of that information, you're probably gonna wanna do it with a search because you can't rely on past data that the AI has learned. So even in this case, we didn't really need to do it. It's still useful to see that the agent is able to search Google for the latest data. And in the third step, it now knows that it has this information, but it has to do some calculation with them. Again, an LLM can sometimes do some basic calculation because it's kind of learned that into the model. But for something like this, it might be better to use a tool so you can guarantee that the results are actually computed properly. Uh, so in this case, it's 
correctly decided that it needs to use the calculator tool and it's also picked out the two numbers and the operation needed between those numbers to get the answer. After it runs the calculator with this data it found previously, uh, it finally has its answer. And it returns the answer to our user here uh, that the population difference is 264 million people. So as you can see, this is a really powerful concept because now you can harness the power of an LLM uh, to build applications that can call APIs or do more complex tasks all by itself. Now there's a couple more Langchain features that are available and I won't go into too much detail about, but I just want to call out. The first is called Retrieval Augmented Generation, uh, or RAG. This lets you connect an LLM to a data source, like a database, an API, or a document, and then it'll have your LLM pull information from that data source. So this is really useful if you want to build something like a chatbot where you can use to ask it questions against a large data store or a large set of documents that you might have. For example, uh, documentation for your business's product or maybe a hundred page legal document. Another interesting feature is the memory module, which lets you store context or chat history so that you can use it as part of your prompt and then build something that remembers past messages. Again, really useful if you want to build something like a chatbot. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Um, if there's any specific AI projects or applications you'd like to build or see a tutorial for, then please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, see you next time, and thank you for watching.